Hey guys, I am back. Zoom decided that it didn't like me and kicked me right off. <laughs> so I am back and today we are talking about how to speak your prospects language to get better, closer connections with them. It can be done virtually uh, through social media posts or it can be done face to face as we're starting to get out and about. So here we go again. I'm going to try and share my screen and not not lose us here. Just give me one second. Oh, I don't know why Facebook isn't allowing me to share. Okay, let's see if this actually pops up. Sometimes Zoom does crazy things. Drop me a one if you guys have been having any kind of challenges with Zoom. I think. Hmm. Yeah, okay. It's showing now. Awesome. Okay, guys. Here we are, how to speak your prospects language. And this is a super important training. If you're using social media to build your business and you're writing posts or creating videos, um, when we speak our prospects language, they're more likely to hear us, connect with us, feel like they're understood, feel, have them feel like you're relatable. And that's going to create that closer connection really, really quickly. Okay. So basically, our mission here at Social Networking Professionals is to show you simple strategies to build your business on social media and attract qualified prospects to you. That is our mission here. And we, in case we haven't met, we are social networking professionals. I'm Ruth Sheridan. I'm flying solo here today. Uh, Trisha Verzera and Rob are both away on holidays and Jesse McPherson is taking a much needed break today. So uh, I'm flying solo here. So really appreciate any uh, comments that you leave. It'll make me feel not so alone here today. And uh, I'll make sure I answer them all and give you a shout out when you do comment. So thanks for hopping in guys and uh, let's dive right in. So we promise to deliver relevant up to up to date social media strategies that work now that work now on social media social media is changing all the time, like literally daily. <laughs> I think that Facebook algorithm changes from day to day drop me a a two in the comments if you feel that way if what was working one day isn't working the next. So we always try to teach leading edge stuff here that's working now, things that we're actually doing and testing out in our own businesses so that you can have the same access to those tools and resources. Um, we also have this private Facebook group where we answer your marketing questions live each week. And uh, we do a lot of other cool stuff. We do some tech, tech talks uh, that Rob does to help you through any tech challenges you might have. And this is all free to you to help you really grow your business in the social media space. Uh, we also provide daily inspiration and motivation over on our Facebook page. So on that page, social networking professionals, hashtag S SNP, you will see uh, some of our group members here giving motivation, giving training tips every single day in the morning wake up call. So make sure you check that out. So why this is different, number one, what worked six months ago just isn't working today. And what worked five years ago is not working today. I know five years ago, I used to be able to get, uh, get away with kind of posting about my products and posting about my opportunity on social media. And I'd actually get a little traction that way. Does not work, doesn't work anymore. Basically, people will just keep scrolling by those types of posts because they feel kind of salesy, right? So um, secondly, we're committed to always creating the next thing. So we're always looking at what's going on out there in the social media world, what's working now, what is the most innovative thing that we can do to powerfully empower you to help you grow your network marketing business. Um, and what we've noticed after 
training so many network marketers over the last few years is that most network marketing teams and leaders keep doing what worked for them in the beginning, even if it's failing their team because they're not up-leveling their skill, right? And I'm so proud of you for joining this group so that you can up-level your skills and take responsibility for your own business. Because it's when we blame other people for our lack of results that we stay stuck. When we step up and take responsibility for our own business, our own skill level, our own training, that's when the magic happens, right? So drop me a magic in the comments if you have a fundamental belief that it's your responsibility to up-level your skills and it's not your company's fault or it's not your upline's fault, it's your responsibility. And I have a feeling most of you guys in this group are cut from that cloth because you're here and you're learning. So uh, congratulations to you all for doing that. Next thing is we are the only network marketing team within our company with a full attraction marketing training system that doesn't require fancy tech or a big ad budget. So what we teach you here in this group are many of the things that we actually teach our network marketing team and we're making them available to you so that um, you know you have a fighting chance of having success in your business. And I am getting a lot of magics here. I knew it, Trisha, Jenny, Whitney, Wilma, Gayla, Kelsey. Yeah, you guys are amazing. You take responsibility for your business and really are here up-leveling your skills, which is so awesome. Okay, so this little presentation about to happen is for you if you're looking for a duplicatable system online to rank up quickly. If you understand that social media is the land of opportunity, it literally is, guys, especially in the, this, this time of people being at home. Um, this is one of really the only ways to reach out and continue to grow your business and have it flourish, right? If you're sick of, this is for you, if you're sick of not getting results and you want a real system and real training to help you move forward and become a better network marketer. And if you're coachable and motivatable, right? So this is important right now because social media is changing quickly. You need to have an arsenal of tools to help you become better at what you do so that your business becomes better. And again, many of the strategies that that worked before aren't working now. So we really endeavor on teaching what is most leading edge. And to be a leader, guys, if you wanna be a leader, a team leader, a network marketing leader, you have to be on the, the cutting edge of what's working now, right? Because yes, old school stuff can still work, but the environment that we live in in this day and age is really lending itself to social media and to online marketing, right? Most people don't want to do that old stuff in terms of going to hotel meetings. And I did it. I used to go every week to a hotel meeting and try and get people there and mall sharking and all of that weird stuff. Um, there is a better way to do it. And it starts with social media. Okay, so how we got here, we used to do all the things that everyone did in the beginning. We did challenge groups, product promotions, you know, those pictures of your products on your timeline, cross posting and praying that someone's gonna ask about it. We did the sweaty selfies, <laughs> that always makes me laugh. Uh, awkward reach outs to friends, friends from high school. Um, that always seemed really weird to me. Join my team posts. I used to do that at the end of every week when I was desperate. If I hadn't recruited people that week, I would get desperate and I would create this post that I was looking for five new team members and all the reasons why people should join me and they never got anywhere. So um, did them all. And all of the above though, worked at one point in time when social media was new to network marketers, does not work very well, if at all now. So we are getting lots of yeses, magics, hey girl, yeah, hey girl messages. Um, so yeah, you guys have done it too. I know if you've been in the industry a while, um, you've probably done a lot of these things as well. So we had a light bulb moment and it was when we finally stepped back 
And I remember I, I stepped back and I went, I am spending so much time doing all these activities, driving to hotel meetings, posting on social media, um, you know, trying to connect with people, mailing out samples. I did it all and it wasn't working. And I got to the point where I just went, I should just sort of give up and decide that it's okay that for the next 10, 15 years, I'm gonna go to my corporate job. I had a great job um, and just, you know, kind of suck it up and spend my life there. And it got to the point where I almost did that because I was making more per hour than my, like I was making virtually nothing in my business and it's spending huge amounts of time. And that's when I just went, okay, something is not right here. There's something wrong with this model that I'm using. And that's when I really stepped back and started to research what's working online, who's having success. And I started to follow some people who were highly successful in the industry and were using attraction marketing. The very first person I followed was Ray Higdon. Um, Ray is a legend in the network marketing training space. And I started following him years ago and came to understand how attraction marketing worked. I didn't understand all of the little mechanics underlying it, but conceptually I went, okay, he's nailed it. That's what I have to do. And then went on to, and took it into my own hands to learn the skills. And that's exactly what you guys are doing here, which is so amazing. That's where the magic is. It's where you decide that you're gonna take matters into your own hands and learn skills for yourself. And that's when everything changed, when, when I changed my business model. So let me ask you, how would it feel to have a simple roadmap to get 10 to 20 leads from one Facebook post? Hit some of those heart emojis if that would feel good, right? From one Facebook post. How would it feel to build a tribe of people who want it as much as you do? And I got to tell you, I remember my first network marketing team, I recruited a ton of people through my gym. I was a gym owner and um, they were all the wrong kind of people. They were really just product users. They, they weren't entrepreneurs. And I literally had to drag them along, drag them, beg them to go to convention and, you know, incentivize them to do certain things. And it was a lot of work and they ended up all leaving anyway. So what if you had the right kind of people joining you who actually wanted to run with you, who wanted it as, as much as you do? It's game changer, right? So never having to chase people again. I used to just, it would drive me crazy chasing people. Like that following up eight, nine, 10, 12 times. Yes, we have to follow up. But I kind of think after a couple of times, people don't want to hear from me again, especially if they keep saying no. Now, I might keep them on my list for six months down the road touching base, but um, the fortune being in the follow-up, yes and no. You can actually, if you do it too much, you're going to alienate people, right? So when you're actually talking to people who want what you have, there's rarely a lot of need to follow up right? Because they're asking you, you're not chasing them. And really, how would it feel to have confidence showing up on social media? I remember in the beginning, I was not confident at all. I, um, I was really nervous being on social media, especially on video. But when you start to see results through your own skill set, your confidence level just skyrockets. So if all these things would feel good, guys, hit some of those love heart emojis and uh, we'll keep rolling through this. So how to get results fast. In order to connect with your ideal business prospect, you need to speak their language. So when we speak someone's language, not only will it grab their attention, it'll also get them into action because they'll feel more connected with you. They'll trust you more. They'll feel more understood by you. 
And that's going to create relationship really, really quickly. The first step in this is, first of all, is you've got to understand who is your ideal business prospect. And thanks for all the heart emojis, guys. I really appreciate it. Jenny, helps your volume but sucks your soul. Yeah, that's totally, totally right. Hey, Dee, thanks for joining in. Nice to see you here. Anyway, guys, how to get results fast. And it's speaking your prospect's language. Um, in order to do that, you have to understand who your prospect is. And I'm going to flip through to the second slide here. So who is the prospect? Is it going to be someone interested in joining your business opportunity? Or is it going to be a customer that you're looking to attract? Those types of people use very, very different words, right? So let's say you want to attract an entrepreneur, maybe another network marketer who's looking to make a change, looking for a new company, looking for a new team or leadership. You wanna think about what types of words that person typically uses in their industry or in their dialogue. Same thing on the customer side. If someone is looking for say, weight loss products, what are the words that they typically use when they're describing their weight, their weight problem or looking for weight loss products, okay? Things like belly fat and BMI and, um, you know, cellulite or wh whatever words they would typically use when they're looking to solve the problem for their, for their, you know, for their, for the product that you're selling. On the recruiting side, when you look at network marketers, what kind of words do they use? Specific to the industry, upline, downline, convention. I've got a whole list of them for you coming up. But first and foremost, you have to decide intentionally who is your post directed at, right? Who are you specifically trying to attract with that post? And then you have to think about what words that that person would typically use within their industry or within the problem that they're trying to solve. Okay, so drop me um, some thumbs up, guys, if you're understanding this distinction. I don't want to move on unless I make sure that you're understanding this distinction here because uh, it's super important because when we write in an untargeted way our posts, then they, they don't really resonate with anyone, right? They don't really hit anyone right here. So I'm getting some thumbs up, which is great. Thanks, guys. Okay, so let's keep moving on. So using words that are specific to your prospect, it's, it's going to make you relatable. It's going to make you understandable. And it's going to allow that prospect to feel more connected with you. They will feel like they're being understood, right? They'll feel like they have something in common with you. And it's that commonality that's going to cause them to want to reach out to you, to feel at ease enough to reach out to you. So here are some examples of what a business prospect might look like in the network marketing sort of arena. So if you're out there looking for people, the right kind of people who want to make income, who want to join a business, who want to be in network marketing, these are some examples of uh, what kind of people are actually looking for opportunities like network marketing. So let's look at each of these individually. I'm going to run through this list pretty quickly. The first one is other network marketers. Other network marketers make amazing business partners because they have no objection to the industry. They're entrepreneurial. They want to grow businesses. Uh, they like to go to convention. They love doing personal development. They're ideal, right? And I often make this analogy because um, sometimes people will say to me, well, Ruth, why would I want to attract another network marketer? They already have a business, right? Well, first of all, know that network marketers change companies four to seven times before they settle down and find a home because 
usually in the beginning when they're first recruited, they like I was, I had no idea what the industry was all about. I had no idea um, that a team was important or an upline was important or a comp plan was important or any of those things. I, I Someone just sold me some products and they said I could sell them in my gym and I thought it was a great idea. And then all of a sudden I'm in this world of network marketing. So when we first start out, we usually start out kind of blindly. So drop me a me in the comments. If you, in your first opportunity, you kind of went in blindly like I did. So that being said, network marketers, they are amazing team members, right? Because they want to be here and and they want to grow businesses and there's no objections to the industry and all of that. So that's the first thing. That's the first really, really great um, sort of business prospect you could have. The second one is what I call the cubicle slave. You know, I'm getting a lot of me's here. Karen did a me, me, me. <laughs> that's a lot of me's. Um, so the next one is the cubicle slave. That person who maybe they have a great job. They've got a steady job. They're going to work every day. That was me years ago. I was commuting an hour and a half each way to work. Um, liked my job, but felt, you know, it, it was taking me away from my kids all the time. I was traveling a lot for work. That part really bothered me. And I didn't know there was another way. I didn't know about network marketing. I didn't know there was this whole concept of creating residual in income through product sales. And uh, I thought I was, I was stuck as a cubicle slave forever. And the cubicle slaves, they're going to have a different kind of language than the network marketer. And we're going to go over those in a minute. They're going to use different words than the network marketer. So in your posts, if you're really targeting cubicle slaves, then you've got to be speaking their language. The next one that is a great business prospect in network marketing is stay-at-home moms. You know, over the years of coaching people, a ton of stay-at-home moms who, again, are using a different language than the network marketers and cubicle slaves in terms of what their challenges are and what they want to get out of their lives and, and potential businesses. And we're going to go over these things. Next one is people looking to retire, right? Older people who want to retire, but maybe don't have enough money in their 401k, maybe don't have a pension. Notice those are specific terms to people who want to retire that maybe aren't specific terms to the stay-at-home mom, right? People looking to pay off debt, people looking to have a travel fund. Those are all really great business prospects on the recruiting side. So let's talk about network marketers. What are some of the terms that you might use that are typical to network marketing? So if you think of some, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. I'm sh I, haven't, I don't have an exhaustive list here. But here's, our, here's some of the more typical ones that you might talk about or write a post about or talk about in a live that when the person heard it or read it, they immediately know that you're talking to them if they're a network marketer. So these words are upline, downline, convention, list of 100, three-way calls. These are all very specific to the network marketing industry three-way Zooms, uh, comp plan, recruiting, sponsoring, team building, residual income, car bonus, trip incentive, bugging friends and family, sending hey girl messages. So yeah, list of 200, hey girl, upline, friends and family. So you'll notice that these terms, prospects, that's, that's right, Karen, um, comp plan, yep. Those are all very, very specific terms to the network marketing industry. So if you're writing a post with the intent of attracting a network marketer, using their language is going to allow them to immediately know that 
you're connectable, you have something in common, you're speaking their language, you're not speaking in a foreign language, your post will attract them that way, okay? Let's look at the cubicle slaves now. So cubicle slaves are not talking about uplines and downlines and, and all those things, they're talking about the nine to five, the grind, the commute, the paycheck, the salary, the boss, the employees, the vacation pay, the hourly rate, the income ceiling, the glass ceiling, childcare, daycare. Um, and you know, if you can think of others, drop them in the comments. That person who's sitting in their cubicle eight, 10 hours a day, what are they feeling? What are they thinking about? What are the words they use? Uh, water cooler conversations, right? Uh, performance reviews. So those are some of the things that no time, no life, no control. Absolutely. Absolutely, Jenny. Um, absolutely. So if your intent is to appeal to an audience of cubicle slaves, then these are some of the words you should be using, right? And there's probably thousands of others. This is just a sampling. Now, can you combine two types of, of um, prospects? Absolutely. You could have a network marketer who is also has a full-time job and is a cubicle slave. So you can combine these words if your avatar, if your ideal business prospect has two of these sort of modalities, right? The next one is stay-at-home moms. So every time I ever talk to a stay-at-home mom in my entire coaching career in network marketing, these are the things that come up most frequently. Wanting to contribute financially, feeling like they're not enough, even though, for, drop me a me, and drop me a three in the comments if you're a mom, because being a mom, man, that's more than a full-time job, right? And then if we're layering a career on top of that, it's almost unmanageable. But most stay-at-home moms, um, you know, one of the big things is, is they feel like they're not enough and, and that's sad. And they want to contribute more. They want to contribute financially. They want to feel that worth, even though their, their worth is way more than that, right? Raising children is like number one. <laughs> Absolutely, number one. But this, these are just some of the things that I'm that I hear from people. They want to have their own money. These are some of the other terms that they use: scheduled play dates, homeschooling, feeling an um, imbalance in household duties. So just because the mom stays at home, she's got to do everything at home, right? Including taking care of the kids and the whole shebang, right? So feeling a little bit of an imbalance, feeling resentful. I've heard that from people, feeling resentful because there isn't much of a balance at home. Um, spending valuable time with kids, right? That's a big plus. You'll, you'll hear that over and over, spending valuable time with kids, not missing out on life. But one of the biggest challenges is wanting to contribute financially. And another one that I didn't write down here is feeling isolated. So being at home, feeling isolated um, because you're not out with in the workforce interacting with a lot of adults or some people aren't, right? So they feel kind of isolated um, and really lacking that emotional sort of friendship uh, level with other adults. So if your business prospect is a network marketer and a stay-at-home mom, well, think about combining those terms, right? Because network marketing can satisfy a lot of these, um, you know, things that stay-at-home moms want. That, you know, feeling part of a team, feeling uh, friendship on their team, feeling like you're going with a tribe, with a group, making your own money, adding financially. So those things also go really nice together with a network marketing prospect. 
But using these terms specifically in your communication in social media posts, when a, let's say a stay-at-home mom who is a struggling network marketer reads some of these terms in a post, they're going to go, oh my gosh, this is for me. This person is talking to me. They understand me. Um, so you can go through pretty much any kind of prospect and come up with a list of words that they typically, that they typically use in their sort of uh, demographic, their circle of influence, the world they live in, right? And when you come up with those terms, what's going to happen is they'll take notice. When you speak your prospect's language, they're going to take notice. Um, you will be absolutely more relatable and they'll feel like you understand them when you use their terms. And I got to tell you, one of the things that I, I've done a lot of kind of high level sales training over the years. And one of the things that I was taught through a company called Sandler. Sandler is a um, sales or like a sales training organization. They teach high, high level sales to to teams and to companies. And one of the things that they always said was that whenever you're talking to a prospect, you should repeat what they say. So if the, your prospect's telling you what their challenge is and what their dream is, always repeat to them what they've said. Things like, so let me understand what I heard from you. I understood that you're stuck in your business. You want to contribute to your family. You want to continue to stay at home with your children so you have the quality of life. You want to use their specific terms because it again, it's going to show that you listen to them, but you also understand, right? When people feel like they're understood, they feel at ease, they feel like they there's trust and they're more likely to want to go to the next step with you, okay? So that's why all of this is super important and matters. And when you're doing your social media posts, absolutely, absolutely do a double read. Ask, ask yourself, who am I targeting this post at? And am I using the words that they would typically use to describe their situation? So let me know, guys, if you're getting this, if this is making sense to you. Drop me some... Uh, some of those love hearts, if it is. Yeah, Jennifer, choose your own income. Yep. Get out among adults. Yes. Awesome, guys. Thanks for chiming in. I'm here all by myself today. <laughs> okay, so here is, I know this writing is a little bit small, and I'm going to go through this with you. So this, uh, this is a little post we did. It, it was actually turned into an ad and it was targeted at network marketers, okay? So I'm just gonna read through it real quickly and hit, this will be fun, hit a, one of those heart emojis that pop up. When you see a word, when I say a word that sounds like a network marketing term because this is targeted at network marketers, we wanna make sure they, they know it by using their terms. So ever wonder if it's possible to build a team in today's world? So hit a heart emoji if you hear a network marketing term. In just two weeks, we personally got 20 people started. That turned into 77 team members and 29 rank advancements. Yes, in just two weeks. Any hearts? You see, if you're not seeing results like this, then maybe you just don't have the right strategy. It wasn't long ago we were trying to get anyone who would listen to join our business. Posting 10 times a day, messaging random people, posting on Instagram and every other social network out there, literally crossing our fingers someone would bite. Yeah, there's lots of network marketing terms in there. Totally. It wasn't successful. We did enroll a few people from all that work, but within a month or two, they would quit. And bugging friends and family, we stopped doing that years ago because we, it didn't work very well either and it just felt weird, okay? So I could keep going through this, but I think you guys get the idea that there's a lot of network marketing terms in here. And if someone was to see this post and they were a struggling network marketer, they, they would know we are talking directly to them, right? 
So that's how you can use language to make sure that your prospect on social media um, immediately knows you're talking to them. Okay, so once you have someone who is engaging with you and maybe you're at the point you can make get them into a Zoom call or some kind of online conversation, we wanna keep this relatability going. And I know many of you heard, um, or drop, drop me a one in the comments if you've heard the term mirror and match before. So let me know if you've heard that term before. Mirror and matching makes, um, is basically a way when we're talking to people um, to mirror what they do and match certain things in their mannerisms, tone of voice, and so on. And when we mirror and match someone, it, it makes us more relatable. Again, no different than the words we choose in our posts, mirroring and matching, that's hard to say mirroring and matching, um, make, again, connects us closer together because the person feels at ease with us, right? So imagine this. So a lot of you have heard this before um, of mirroring, mirroring and matching. I cannot tell you how effective it is when you're intentional with it, especially in a recruiting process or a sales process. So imagine if... Um, you had a prospect who was really introverted, really quiet, like a little mouse, really shy, right? And she's really nervous coming on a call with you and she's kind of shrinking and you show up really big and, hey, how's it going? So awesome to meet you. I think network marketing is amazing and I can't wait to tell you all about this. She's just gonna go, holy smokes. What just happened? And she's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? That is not effective mirroring and matching. So if you have someone who is really quiet and, you know, maybe very reserved and speaks slowly and softly, then mirror what they're doing because it will put them at ease and it will make you more relatable to them, okay? Same thing with body language. Body language can happen over Zoom. It can, if I'm sitting like this, that's different than sitting up powerfully, right? So match what your person is doing on Zoom. And um, that whole matching process is going to help you create relatability. If someone is super loud and excited and fun, then sit up straight and, you know, still be yourself, but be yourself times two, right? Put yourself a little bit more up there, out there. Maybe if they speak quickly, increase your rate of speech, or if they speak really, really slowly, slow it down for them because we want to be relatable. So that comes down to tone. It comes, we've talked about the words we use already, body language, mannerisms, okay? So mannerisms are really important. If someone's leaning forward like this, lean forward, like, like get up there <laughs> because they're leaning forward, you wanna lean in as well. If they're sitting back really relaxed, then you sit back really relaxed and have your cup of coffee with them, right? So that whole body language and mannerisms is really important. Volume, if someone speaks loudly and energetically, match it to get the best of your ability. If they're a little bit slower and softer, speak a little slower and softer. Um, facial expressions. If someone is smiling, smile back. If someone looks concerned, show concern back, right? Really that whole mirroring and matching and becoming aware of it is gonna help you create better connections on Zoom and put the person you're talking to at ease so you can walk them through the sales process. So 
that's a little bit about mirroring and matching. Drop me some um, me's in the comments if you've tried mirroring and matching before and it worked like a charm for you. I'm curious how many of you actually practice it. Um, Jennifer says, I have had to master this over my 20 year career in the medical field as a CNA to gain trust and put people at ease. Yeah. So this all like it's not just sales, right? This is part of life. It's part of life. It's part of having friends. It's part of creating new relationships with people. And uh, it's really life skills. So that is um, that is it today, guys, for our training. So matching your prospects' words to connect them to you in your posts and in your videos, mirroring and matching through in your Zoom conversations is going to help you. If you're if you're very aware of it, it's going to help you move your business forward uh, a whole lot quicker. So. If you're new to this group, this is just a snapshot of some of the things we train our network marketing team on. We, tra we train a lot of online strategies, both automated and organic. Um, we share funnels. We do all kinds of things with our team and we teach them sales skills. So in the last three months, um, we've recruited over 250 new agents and trained them in these processes. We've seen over 70 rank advancements in that very, very short time. Uh, we're getting ready to really ramp it up again in the next uh, kind of week and a half. We're doing another 90 day run. Uh, we took a little breather for a couple of weeks because you can't run at high speed every single day. So we do things in 90 day blocks and we are super excited to get a new group of people into momentum, just like the first group did. So uh, super excited about that. That's coming up. If you are struggling in your network marketing business, maybe you're looking around uh, to do something differently. Maybe you're a cubicle slave and you're, you're looking to earn some extra income or a way out like I was. Um, just connect with us. Get back to the person who brought you into this group or reach out to me uh, on social media and we can have a discussion and see if something that we have is a fit for you. And certainly if you do end up coming on board with us, we'll send you back to the person who brought you into this group um, to help you get started. So anyway, guys, that is it for today. Have an amazing weekend. Thank you for joining in and see you all real soon. Bye for now.